Hari, together with his brother Sham, has co-founder of Jubilant Bharatiya Group. It's a US dollar, three billion dollar group. <coughs> Hari's role, Hari's role in institution work includes his role in various capacities with Indian Institute of Technology in Delhi and IIT Kanpur as chairman of the board of governors. He is currently president of Indian industry in CII and chairman of the Indian Institute of Management at Raipur. He is also a member in several educational and science and technology programs for the government of India. I am also aware of the fact, friends, that Hari has been asked by Mr. Kapil Sibyl to chair and be part of the committee that is looking at the rejuvenation and reforms in the IIT system. He is a chemical engineering graduate of the IIT Delhi and has been conferred the Distinguished Alumni Award by IIT Delhi in the year 2000. May I request Hari to say a few words on this occasion while awaiting the CM sir. Please join us. Difficult to speak before Naren Bhai, so I'm sure you guys are all excited to hear about uh, what he wants to say. And we are tomorrow celebrating the vibrant Gujarat. But quickly, uh, uh, as Sumit said, my this year my role has been to uh, to be the president of Confederation of Indian Industry. So I would like to share with you what we have been trying to do this year as part of CII. When we looked at this year, what we said is, you know, we India has been growing at the rate of almost 9% this year. In the last five to six years, we saw that uh, our growth rate has been averaging around 8%. Even in the worst time of recession, global recession, I think India grew uh, at almost 6 to 7 percent. That only showed the kind of resilience that we had. So today we, uh, we sit on the high table of G20. Uh, that's very exciting because uh, uh, we are now part of the uh, big boys team. Uh, India is expected to be the uh, third largest economy by 2050. Uh, as the famous Goldman Sachs report said, uh, you know, we are one of, we will continue to be one of the fastest growing country. But while we, while we celebrate that, there are, uh, there are many issues that we deal with. And I'd just like to quickly highlight. Uh, one is, you know, we always talk about our demographic advantage that, you know, in, by 2020, an average age of an Indian will be about 29 years, while the world would be aging, the average age of a Chinese at that time would be almost 37, 38 years old. The, the Europeans will be much older, and uh, the Japanese, again, older than that. So India would be the, really the uh, provider of uh, human resource globally. Now, while we have this fantastic demographic advantage, Let's see what, what we are doing with it. Uh, so in CII, we, we said that if we have to uh, provide livelihood to these young people, what do we need to do? Uh, just to give you an estimate, every year, almost 16 to 17 million people come into the job market. And that's the kind of... Uh, uh, number of people that we have to provide livelihoods with. And uh, out of the total people who are employed, 50% are employed in agriculture and 50% are employed in public sector and the private sector. Out of the uh, remaining 50%, only about 10% are employed in the uh, public sector. The remaining are part of uh, private sector and self-employed. So today, 17% of the economy employs almost 50% 50, 50 of the people. So going forward, this is uh, the agriculture will shrink. More and more people will come into the private sector. Uh, and that's where more and more livelihoods need to be created. Now, if we have to create livelihood and good income level, uh, let's look at our education system. 
presently uh, only 35% of our people come out of this class 12. So the 65% really drop out. And out of these 35%, only 10% go into the graduate school. So our, uh, let's say 10 to 12%. So, so we have a, a, a ratio which we are talking about to taking it to 30%. So we are saying that can we have 30% of the eligible age people going in the graduate school. Now that, that means that we have to increase our capacity for colleges from 12% to 30%. That means almost multiplying two and a half times in the next 10 years. So that's the kind of capacity that we need to build. Just to give you an example, China is already, China is already having 30% of the people becoming graduate. So, uh, and if you take developed economies, it will go as high as 60 to 70 percent. So our challenge is 90 percent of the people go into the job market directly. So directly from the school. Now, so first, our first challenge is education. And we are in this beautiful Nirma University. And I think we need multiples of these universities to be built. So one of our biggest challenge if we need our growth to be sustainable, is to really build the whole education system's capacity. And this is one of the things that CII has been working with the government, that this cannot be solely done by the government, but we really need to partner. The second part we call is employability, which is really skill development. Because what happens in our schools is while we are uh, getting educated at the at primary level, our enrollments are almost as uh, good as 95%, but it steeply starts dropping out, and by the time we class, uh, reach class 12, 65% of the people drop out of school. So most of the kids today are going into the job market directly from school, and only 5 to 7% of them are given any kind of formal skill training. So you can imagine the challenge that we have where you have these kids who are part of the school system, but there is no mentoring to them in terms of either soft skills or skills will actually make them employable. And I think for people to have increasing income level, this is the biggest challenge that we have in terms of how do we get these kids from school to be employable. So one of the things that CII has worked with the government is to say that how can we bring vocational training into the school? Can we give soft skills in the school? Can companies work with communities to train people? And as companies, we have done experiments in many locations where we found that if you provide three months of soft, soft skills to the kids who pass out of class eight or ten, you the chances of their employability increases from almost zero to 60 percent. So providing skills is one of our major challenge. I know the Gujarat government has a large program of uh, funding the skill development. So this is one area that CII has taken with the companies to really build the capacity of skill development. Just to give you an example, in countries like South Korea, uh, almost 90-95% of the people who go into the job market have some kind of formal skill training. In Germany, as you know, they have this dual system where they could go into vocational areas and then, if need be, go into the mainstream uh, uh, of academia. So, uh, every country has evolved a system where they could skill their youngsters, especially at the school level, because all of them are not lucky really to go to college to have higher education. And even at the college level, the employability needs to be worked at. That is alignment of what they learn versus what they need, the skills at the workplace. So these are the two challenges, major challenges. The third one we talked about was innovation. So first is education, second is employability, third is innovation. We, we do believe that uh, uh, companies will need to continuously innovate in terms of our own markets. And there are examples that you see in terms of innovation. 
where where people have done frugal innovation, uh, very smart innovations where they could provide a service at a very low cost to uh, to people. The, uh, give to give you an example like the Arvind uh, Institute of Eye Clinic, where they are able to provide cataract operation at 1200 rupees of a very high quality and good outcome. So, Professor Prahlad has always talked about this, that uh, there lies gold at the bottom of the pyramid, provided you have the capacity to innovate, really, in terms of uh, how you do things. The, the last thing that at CII we discussed was entrepreneurship. One of the, one of the major things that we will need to work upon is to have people being taught entrepreneurship at the school level because the largest number of people uh, who will go to the job market will have to be self-employed. So entrepreneurship is something that will drive the livelihood. And if you, if you make one entrepreneur, he actually creates almost 10 livelihood. So one of the, one of the biggest challenges is how do you make entrepreneurs? And globally, this has been experimented and seen that even entrepreneurship requires a bit of training. So if you give a skill to somebody, if you make somebody help becoming a plumber, but if he has become a plumber, then how does he create a trade of plumbing? And I think it does require a bit of entrepreneurship. In India, we have seen, is a country of uh, uh, people who have the potential to be great entrepreneurs, from small to to medium, to large, and then now building global enterprises. So our capacity building in entrepreneurship has to go up. So we have seen that if we focus firstly in building the human relationship at, uh, at education and employability level, and then building the capacity of innovation, and then finally entrepreneurship. So CII has focused this year on all these four areas and worked with the communities and companies around to build this part uh, uh, across the 8,000 uh, or so companies that are members of ours. With that, I'd like to close my remarks and thank you. Thank you, Sunil, for inviting me and uh, giving me a chance to give a commercial on Confederation of Indian Industry and uh, promote our thoughts. Thank you. Thank you very much.